What's up everyone, it's Bucky and welcome to your 8th C tutorial and in this tutorial we're going to be going over something called the switch statement. Now what the switch statement is, is pretty much an alternative to the if, else if, else statement. Now um, in case you guys forgot what that did, it pretty much takes a number and it tests that number and whatever it equals to it gives you um, a bunch of different pieces of code to execute. And this is much easier just to type and show you guys so I'm going to do just that. The first thing we need to do is declare or define a variable, let's uh, say integer called, we'll just name it number. Just keep things simple. Um, the next thing that we're going to want to do is make a scan to get some input from the user. So let's put percent %d since it's a decimal and let's put ampersand, where are you, number. So whatever the user enters, it's going to be stored in the uh, number variable. I'm not going to have any output on the screen, no print statements. Uh, just keep things simple for now. And the syntax for the switch statement is this. Type in the word switch. Now in your argument, you only have to write what variable you want to test. So you're going to write, okay, I want to test the variable number to see what they entered. And then you have to make something or a bunch of things called cases. Now what a case has to be is an option of what they could have entered. So if it says in case they entered the value um, 2 then add a colon not a semicolon just a regular colon and on the next line you write what you want it to do. In case you enter 2 I want you to print F um, what are we going to print? you entered two and so the first thing you enter is the case of a possible option then after your case you uh, enter what you want the code to do in case they did enter the two and after your case and your code you enter one last thing and that is a break and now and what break means is alright we found the answer keep going to the you don't have to test anymore so pretty much anytime you want to test an option you need a new case new code and a new break so since we just need a new one of those let's just copy that a couple times and let's put four six so you entered four and you entered six and just to show you guys let me move this up if you didn't have this break right here what the code would do is this it would test for two and if you and if you say you entered a number like three it's gonna fail this and keep going on to this and keep going on to this but if you enter two it's gonna keep going on to this and stop since it's already found an answer if you didn't have that break right there it would keep testing all of these but since you already found your answer there is no need to test so might as well have a break might as well save your uh, computer some time and the last thing that you need at, of every switch is something called default now what default does is pretty much the syntax for that is just default with a colon after it and it says alright in case it tests all of these numbers and they're all false none of them pass what code do you want to execute so let's write, let's just copy this actually, it'll be a lot easier. Copy, paste, print, say, I don't know what you entered. And of course, with the default, you also need a break. This is no exception. So let me execute, compile, and run this. And uh, I'll show you guys what this program actually does, as long as I didn't make any errors or anything. So here's our program right here wanting us to enter a number. Let's go ahead and enter the number 4 and press enter. And it says, alright, you entered the number 4. And let's go ahead and execute, uh, let's run this one more time. And I'm going to enter a number that's not 2, 4, or 6. Just to show you guys what the default does. Say you entered 21. Press enter. I don't know what you entered. So again, to reiterate this concept so it sticks in your head one more time. A switch statement takes any variable 
and it in by using something called a case you can test whatever that variable is equal to if any of these cases are true then it executes the code underneath it but if any of them or sorry if all of them are false then it executes the default statement and this is just an alternative to the is if else if else statement it's a lot easier way of testing a single variable if you have multiple options um this is useful this is actually going to be really useful in the programs we're going to be making so make sure you learn this i'm going to go ahead and copy this right now and post it to my website thenewboston.com so if you're too lazy to type all of this just go to my site thenewboston.com copy it i'll have it for you there so study this tutorial make sure to please subscribe to my channel thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys next tutorial